and hey guys what's up I hope you're all doing great welcome to the channel where we talk about anything related to comic books like new releases famous stories or fun films based on comic books in today's video we're gonna be talking about spider-man lotus the spider-man fun made movie that everyone has been waiting for so with no further ado let's start Spider-Man Lotus is a fan-made Spider-Man movie directed by Gavin J. Conop, starring Warden Wayne as Spider-Man, Sean Raid as Harry Osborn, Moriah Brooklyn as MJ, Tuian Powell as Gwen Stacy, and Max Fox as Timothy Harrison. The film is based on Spider-Man Blue and The Kid Who Collects Spider-Man from Amazing Spider-Man 248. Spider-Man Blue is a very famous Spidey story about Peter trying to deal with Gwen's death. In The Kid Who Collects Spider-Man, Spider-Man visits a boy in a cancer clinic who is dying from leukemia and his only wish is to talk with Spidey for a few minutes before he passes away. And that's basically the plot of the movie. Following the death of Gwen Stacy, Peter Parker decides that he should stop being Spider-Man because of how many people have suffered because of him. Trying to deal with her death, he records a tape in which he's talking to her. However, Peter wears his suit again when a terminally ill kid wishes to meet Spider-Man before he dies. Before I start the review, I want to make clear that I will talk about the ending, though there isn't really anything to spoil that isn't in the plot description already, but do whatever you like. Let's start with all the things I liked in this movie. First of all, the CGI was just phenomenal, considering this is a low-budget fun film. In the first few minutes of the movie, we get the no-inspiring swinging scene that looks like it came straight out of comic pages. Not to mention that the music accompanying the scene is amazing and I love how they used parts of the Spider-Man animated series theme. In general, this is the best visually fan-made film I've ever seen. The lighting and the CGI are all pretty good, maybe in the scene with Soccer or Green Goblin not so much though. However, I loved all the fight scenes, even if they were short, and very few. As far as the costume design is concerned, the Spider-Man Lotus suit has to be one of the best live-action Spider-Man suits I've ever seen. It has that classic design, but not to the point it seems old or fake. And I like how we even get to see the classic Steve Ditko suit in a flashback sequence. That really shows how the suit has evolved, and it was very nice seeing the Ditko suit in live action. Additionally, the performance of most of the actors, especially Warden Wayne and Son Raid, was pretty good, and to be honest, I expected worse because they're not professionals. Father just died! I thought you of all people would be able to understand that. Sorry. Look, you weren't the only person who lost something that day. But you can't admit that because you're too selfish to think about anyone else. Nothing is ever a problem until it affects you. Harry, I haven't seen you in weeks. And the first time I do, you're passed out on the couch acting like everything's fine. Look, I get that your dad's Stop. Died. I'm not trying to just stop. You can't just stop! I'd also like to emphasize how much I loved Max Fox's performance as Timothy Harrison because of how young he was, yet how amazingly he played the character. Do you have to go? I'm scared. Tim. Now, let's talk about the story. The dialogues are quite well written, though I do feel they could have been better. The idea of Peter abandoning the Spider-Man persona is one that has been used many times in the past, but not to such extent as in this movie. We really get to see why Peter feels guilt for the death of Gwen Stacy, and why he thinks that pushing people away is the best option because of his fear they will get hurt. There are many comic book references and many flashbacks, some of which I liked, and some I felt like they were too much. However, I think we can all agree that the best part of the movie was Peter's discussion with Tim. The dialogue is very moving, and just when the audience starts liking Tim and seeing him as a brave young boy and an inspiration for Peter, Tim dies. Seeing Tim's tombstone had a huge impact on me and I think everyone, 
not only because of how young he was, but also because he could see behind the mistakes of a person and see the good in their heart. This is the reason why I personally liked Tim as a character. This movie follows the same tradition as all the Spidey movies before it. In the end, we get the final swing scene that has to be one of the best I've seen in a Spider-Man movie. There's no doubt that this movie had a lot of nice stuff, but there are also many things I thought could have really been improved. First of all, there are some things I found bad visually. The costume design for Spider-Man was amazing, but Soccer and Green Goblin had very bad costumes. Like, if it weren't for the gloves, I couldn't even tell that this is Soccer, and Green Goblin's mask seems very fake, and it looked weird on screen. Something else I found weird was Flash Thompson who didn't feel like Flash Thompson, and I wouldn't have recognized him if they didn't call him by his name. Even though Flash had made amends with Peter, he always liked messing with him a bit, not to bully him, just for fun, and Peter did the same. In this movie, he looks very calm and peaceful. Now, some things I found wrong with the story is the fact that we barely saw Peter and Gwen as a couple. In a two hour long movie, in which the only thing that happens is Peter trying to deal with Gwen's death, her death has no impact to the audience. We do feel sorry for Peter and his friends, but not for Gwen. She barely has 8 minutes of screen time in total, and we don't really see her with Peter as a couple much. Only in a scene at the beginning, and in a video with Peter, Gwen and friends having fun. The story gets really boring after some time, because you see everyone mourning, but you can't really join them because you barely knew the person who passed away. And the worst thing is that Gwen's death wasn't even shown on screen which is a really bad decision for a movie focusing on her death. We only see Peter fight the goblin after he killed her, but we don't see how he died either. I also didn't like how we got to see everything that happened in the past via flashbacks. Flashbacks were great for Spider-Man's origin, but I think they were overused to a point where it became tiring to go back and forth to the timeline. I also have to mention that the whole story was too long for absolutely no reason and the lack of action sequences made it extremely boring to watch. Not to mention that everything that happens in the movie is literally everything that's already been told in the plot synopsis. There is no plot twist or revelation or anything else that is going on apart from the main story. They dedicated an entire movie to Peter's reaction to Gwen's death, which could have easily just been one act of the movie. If it weren't for the Timothy subplot, this movie would have been absolutely pointless. We do get to see Peter's feelings and the reaction of the rest of the group more in depth, but it gets boring when that's the only thing we see. Lastly, there wasn't any balance between the action and the emotional moments. There were only two short fights in the entire film. It honestly felt more like watching one of these Turkish drama series than an actual superhero film. I just want to make clear that I'm not taking into consideration the things that have been said about the director and the protagonist, because right now, I want to judge the film, not the people working on it. So, considering this is a fun film, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't that great either. Because of all the hype and that awesome trailer, I had pretty high expectations for this, but I honestly can't see what those $112,000 were used for. Some of that money was definitely used for the suit and the CGI, which left me absolutely speechless, but apart from that, I can't really see where they used the rest. I think there are so much more they could have done. For example, the Peter and Gwen story, which was just 6 minutes, could have been expanded. More action sequences with Peter versus the Goblin and Gwen's death could have been included, and the whole Peter Murning story could have been shorter, but not in a way that it's less meaningful. If they had summed all this up in about an hour, they would have plenty of time for the Timothy story and any other subplot that would make the story more unique. In this way, the movie would have been long, but at least it would have been fun. In general, I believe there are too many missed opportunities in this film, and if it weren't for the Timothy story, I'd give it a 4.5 out of 10. But just because of how much I loved that story, I'm giving this a 5.5 out of 10.
not terrible but not great either. Well guys, this was my review of Spider-Man Lotus. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and allow all notifications. Let me know what you think about the movie in the comments and tell me what other videos you'd like to see in the future. So, until the next time, goodbye true believers!